Thanks for tuning in to our video series. This video will cover verbal operants. So first up, we have a mand. This is the first type of verbal operant that a human emits. So when we say mand, we want to think of a command or a demand that someone is making to get something that they want. Let's look at a few examples. A child sees their stuffed flamingo toy and say, can I have the flamingo toy? The caregiver says, sure, here you go. The child gets the item. This is an example of a mand. Now, manding isn't only for items or tangible things. It's also for information. If we go up and say, what's your name? That's manding for information. You want to know the person's name. If you're teaching social skills and you're wanting your client to say, what's your favorite color to their peer? That is an example of a mand. Next up is tacting. When you hear the word tacting, you should think of labeling objects or any stimuli in the environment that makes contact with your sense modes. A tact is anything that you can hear, smell, see, touch, or even feel. You can label things in the environment that you're looking at. You can label emotions within oneself for the way that you're feeling. These are all examples of tacts. So when we teach our clients to ask for things that they need or want, first we need to start with tapping. So we may teach them by labeling objects in the environment, by prompting them or using an SD that is, what is it? You want them to respond with labeling the item. So you may say, what's this? And they answer, toucan. Or you may say, what's this? And they label it as pineapple. Now also you can tact emotions within oneself if someone says, how are you feeling? Well, something has to be present for them to make the tact association. So if the child is feeling sad and they label sad, this is an example of a tact. The important thing to remember with tacting is that some type of stimuli needs to be present in the environment for a tact to exist. The COIC is next. A coic occurs when the speaker repeats what another speaker has said. It can be words or phrases. It is important to note that a coics do have point-to-point -point correspondence and formal similarity. So that means it sounds the same and the beginning, end, and middle are also the same. So you may say leaf and someone says leaf. You're not specifically asking for anything, but you're just repeating what you hear. You're also not specifically labeling anything, but just repeating what is said. So next up is intraverbal. Intraverbals are a type of verbal operant where the speaker responds to verbal phrases of others. So this is really conversation building. When you hear intraverbal, you can think of answering questions. So for example, if someone comes up to you and asks the question, what's your favorite color? You may respond with teal, or they may say, what's your favorite flower? And you say a hibiscus. There are other common interverbals that are used, uh, such as fill in the blank phrases, one, two, three, or A, B, C. That last piece is the interverbal that's completing the conversation. When you're trying to figure out if it's an interverbal or a man, just look to see, is the speaker or listener the one that is asking the question? If the speaker is asking the question, it's going to be a man. If then the listener responds, that's the interverbal piece, is the listener responding. Next up is textual, and this one's rather simple. It's simply reading. So when you read words and say them out loud, this is, this is textual. You may read the word flower and say flower. So here's an example. Leaf. Pineapple. Last but not least is transcription. This verbal operant consists of writing and spelling words that are spoken. So, for example, flamingo. 
brief. Hi. That's an example of transcription. You're transcribing what you hear. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the verbal operants. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like these. Thanks for watching.